Welcome back to the third installment of our Moody and Ethereal Landscape Painting tutorial series. Now that our previous layer has dried, it's time to introduce our glazes. I'm using raw umber mixed with a painting medium called Liquin by Winsor Newton for this stage. Applying a thin glaze layer in the sky area give your painting a warm, dark hue, complementing the blue layer beneath. This combination creates a translucent, captivating sky, which is far superior to a simple mix of the two colors. To catch up on the earlier episodes of this tutorial series, simply click on the link provided on the screen. The key to achieving a translucent glaze lies in applying a thin layer. Load your brush sparingly with paint and imagine spreading the pigments across the areas of the sky. I always use a wide, flat brush to ensure a smooth transition of colors, which help preserve the seamless blending we've established in the previous layer. I am now using a smaller dagger brush as I begin glazing the landscape area suggestive of trees. This allows for adjustments in shadow intensity where I apply more paint to darker areas and less to lighter ones. This technique maintains the depth of the painting, preventing it from appearing flat. I'm still using raw umber and I mix it with a little bit of Prussian blue when painting these areas. As I start working on the reflections in water, I deliberately use more paint to enhance the shadows. However, the use of small brush may leave visible marks. So I rectify this by switching back to the flat brush used for the sky, wiping it first with a cloth or paper towel to remove excess paint. By blending the paint downwards and sideways, we achieve a beautifully smooth reflection and giving the painting its ethereal quality. Now we're working on the other side and I'm using Prussian blue in this one to create the nice dark reflections in the water. And then we start glazing the areas with the trees, giving it a beautiful bluish warmish tones. Now we'll start working on the light areas of the painting which is the main area where the light source is coming from. I'm using titanium white this time and try to spread it around that area and then I'll add a little bit of Indian yellow to give that beautiful yellow tones.
The initial marks that you create using the pellet knife might be a bit rough, so you can use a round brush to spread the colors around and create that nice transition between dark to light. Your brush would still have a little bit of yellow paint on it, so you can use the one to add a bit of yellowish tones onto the water reflections, but without giving it a thick layer of paint. This will give it a really beautiful translucent layer. As you could probably see in a lot of my paintings, I like creating that reflection from the main light source. And so in this painting, I'm adding a bit more paint on the middle part. So I'm mixing titanium white with a bit of yellow, but a really thin layer. And then I initially apply this one using the round brush. Later on, we're going to blend these colors using the flat brush again. And we're going to use a new flat brush so that you won't be mixing the raw umber you had used previously on the sky. We're now working on the shadows of the clouds and this time I'm using very thin layer of phthalo turquoise and I'm using the Windsor and Newton brand. I felt like I needed to create a bit more light onto the water reflection, so I'm just adding a little bit of titanium white again using a palette knife. And with our flat brush, you blend this color into the layers that we already added earlier on.
Now I'm working on the highlights on that area where it gives you an impression of some bushes in the foreground. I'm using titanium white on this one and with my small round brush, I start painting those impressions of leaves and also the reflections that it would create on the water. After working on the highlights of the bushes, we are now ready to add the highlights on the water. Using the straight side of your palette knife that had some titanium white, I start painting that straight horizontal line. The angle of your palette knife will determine the size of your line, so I suggest practicing to achieve the ideal line size that would work on your painting. I also like creating an impression of mist hovering around the highlighted areas of the water. So I use a round brush to gently spread the paint above and below the line as though the mist is also reflected in the water. To achieve the beautifully blended highlight, use the wide flat brush and start blending the paint in upward and downward direction and aim for that smooth transition particularly in the area where you see the reflections on water.
With a bit of Persian blue on a smaller dagger brush, I'm now working in the shadows to bring an even better contrast. This is how you can make your landscape look illuminated. I have also decided to paint additional bushes in the foreground. So I am now painting the dark areas, then use titanium white for the highlights.
To make the water reflections even look more realistic, I'm now adding very faint shadows reflected in the water from the bushes. Use very little amount of paint on your brush and gently blend the dark color, in this case Prussian blue, around that area. I'm now adding additional highlights in the bushes to make them look as though they are illuminated. I'm still using titanium white. I want to add more highlights and needed to balance the color of light from the background. I used a mixture of titanium white and yellow using a very fine brush to create the details of the highlighted leaves.
And here's our finished painting. If you have any questions, write them in the comments politely and I will do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching.